Hello, welcome to my second review video. Um, I know it's been a while, I haven't really reviewed any labs recently, but I did attend a lab review section recently and I wanted to share with some of you who might not have the time to go to one of these with uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, Professor Browning, um, who went over all four labs in very great detail. So I wanted to um, share with you these before the exam, which is uh, September 30th. It's all day. You take it online. It's very similar to the other exam, except um, I have a strange feeling that it's going to be a bit more difficult because it's based on things that we haven't spent as much time with and we only do once a week. So anyways, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to get into it, starting off with lab one, which was uh, microscopy. Basically, everything that you need to know for this lab can be contained down to the little apparent size table that you can find on page 9 in your lab book. And that's just going to give you a table um, that compares objective lens to total magnification to your view field in millimeters and then the apparent width of your pointer. Um, and you need to know that apparent size goes down with increased magnification. So like the apparent size of your pointer um, in millimeters is going to go down with every increase in objective lens magnification. So it's an inverse relationship. Um, and here's the graph. Additionally, you need to know the different parts of the microscope, um, the mic microscopes that we used among the stereo and compound microscopes. So that would just be like the eyepiece and the stage control, etc., etc. The next lab is protein electrophoresis. And this one I actually already did a video on, um, which is on my channel. It should be the one, two videos before this one. Um, but basically what you need to know for this is that as pH goes up, charge will uh, become more and more negative um, until it hits this isoelectric point in which it has a net charge of zero, and then it will continue um, to be more and more negatively charged as you increase the pH. Uh, and Professor Browning said to be specifically careful about this one because of uh, all the different ways that this question could be asked. For example, you don't have to ask specifically what the isoelectric point is. You could be like, oh, what's the charge going to be at X pH? Or how far has the protein moved along the surface? So it doesn't necessarily have to be contained to this graph, but you will have a bunch of questions asking you to interpret what this graph means. The next lab was about membrane permeability, and uh, for the independent variables in this lab, it was size, lipid solubility, and net charge. And each of these uh, plays a very specific role um, in how uh, molecules interact with the phospholipid bilayer, which is the surrounding of each cell. And for this particular experiment, uh, we used red blood cells, which are impermeable to charged ions like chlorine and sodium. We'll find out later, he, he kind of alluded, Dr. Browning alluded that we'll find out later that there are protein cells and neural cells that allow for sodium and chlorine to come into the cell even though they're polarized ions um, through these specialized pores in the membrane. But I'm kind of going off on a tangent, so back to the lab. The dependent variable is permeability, which is how fast molecules cross the membrane in order to get into the cell. And we don't actually m measure this um, directly by the cells, um, like looking at the cells and seeing how many molecules cross the membrane, but instead we do it based on this measure of transparency um, by showing how long it takes um, for these red blood cells to lyse or explode. Um, in this case, it's called hemolysis. 
Um, we, we wait and see how long it takes for them to explode. And when they do explode, when the blood cell bursts, the solution will turn from this turbid, cloudy solution to a clear solution. And we, that's how we measure how quickly a molecule can permeate the cell membrane. So for the graphs in this, um, you just need to know that permeability and time to lysis, which is H50, um, are inversely correlated. Um, that's one of the graphs you need to know. Uh, the second graph you need to know is that permeability um, will eventually hit a zero point in terms of size. Um, and that size is a molecular weight of 100, but this only applies for polar molecules, uh, meaning molecules that are hydrophilic. Um, as lipid solubility is the trump for that. Um, you can have a very big molecule that can get through the membrane very quickly. In that example was pentanol. It got through very fast despite having a molecular weight of 88. Whereas propen propane trial, I don't know how to say this, propane 3 got through very slowly because, because it was hydrophilic and has a molecular weight of 92. They have similar molecular weights, but lipid solubility ultimately trumps molecular weight. Um, and this is determined, you don't need to know this by the way, but this is determined by the CHOH ratio of bonds. And for pentanol, this is 5 to 1, which means it's very lipid soluble. And for pro propane triol, it's 3 to 3 or 1 to 1, which means it's not very lipid soluble at all. Um, for the final lab, the diversity of life lab, uh, he basically just said to take the diagram on page 28 with all the different characteristics and to just memorize that. And he said that that would be the most efficient way of studying because you would be able to quickly differentiate between the 14 different subspecies of uh, microscopic organisms. Um, brief side note, I think that the most difficult part of this lab exam is going to be lab number three, which is the diversity of life lab, um, simply because it is like, it, it just has so many different organisms that you have to memorize characteristics for. So if you're going to spend the bulk of your time memorizing something, um, first I would do the graphs and then I would do like lab three, just memorizing the chart. Um, I know it's a pain in the ass, but uh, I would seriously recommend spending at least a little bit of time just looking into these creatures. Anyways, that was my lab review. Best of luck to everyone taking this today. Um, sorry for the video coming out so late. I had a bunch of tests to study for and I underestimated the amount of time that this would take me.